Good afternoon to everybody. First of all, I would like to thank Sirka for funding my trip to Japan where I first presented the results of this uh, study on e-learning last November. I would also like to thank the DA Agricultural Training Institute for funding the project and of course UPLB for giving me the opportunity to work on this project. I would like to thank all of you also for coming here, for spending your time and effort so that this activity would be made possible. Without you, this would be useless. This effort would be useless. So, what is that happen for? Okay. For the background or context, Robbie stated for that for development to take place, society must be ready for change. And in order for society to be ready for change, there are three components that must be taken into consideration. First, human resources must be skilled, disciplined, and be prepared for social change. Institutions must also be willing to offer reforms that would lead to social change. And lastly, governments and other institutions must provide access to knowledge and technologies for people. Murphy and Mathur in 2008 uh, stated that e-learning is a significant tool for social change or initiating social transformation. According to them, e-learning can provide opportunities to share socially relevant messages that include convergence of various types of media, let's say the website, uh, video, YouTube, uh, text mes and text messaging. And that the content of e-learning can address needs and provide benefits that will lead to social transformation at the individual, community, and societal level. The API has offered its e-learning program in 2007, but it had not conducted any formal assessment of the program five years after its implementation. The API has conducted monitoring through users online of its e-learning and has also provided for online uh, quizzes to determine knowledge uh, gain of the participants because if they, cannot, they did not pass the course, they will not be given certificates at the end. So uh, DA was essentially conducting mostly monitoring and not actually evaluation. So DA said uh, five years or seven years after the program, it's an opportune time so that we can gather evidences that e-learning works, evidences that e-learning has provided benefits to its users. There are two research objectives for the study. One is to determine the inputs, outputs, and outcomes of e-learning from users' perspective based on uh, Coley's model, and also to map out evidences of e-learning among its users. This is the theoretical framework. Uh, a situation, for example, e-learning has certain components. There are inputs, outputs, and outcomes. Inputs would refer to time, money, partners, etc. invested into the situation. Outputs can refer to what has been done and who are rich by the project. And outcomes can be measured in terms of short, medium, and long term. For purposes of the study, we mainly look at short to medium term outcomes and not really the long term outcomes. In addition, there are external influences environmental and other related programs that affect the learning situation. Okay. The Agricultural Training Institute has been offering its e-learning program on agriculture and fisheries as an online certificate course. The program is actually open to the public 24-7. It is offered free. That means even you can access and be a user or be a learner of the of the e-learning program. And digital learning resources are also provided as I mentioned earlier. There is YouTube, there are website references that the students can, can use. There's also Facebook and there's also the uh, text messaging. An e-extension coordinator acts as regional administrator for the different regions where API is offering the course. And uh, as of uh, 2014, 
15,499 rollies have been reported, and out of these, there have been 10,000 graduates. And now, there are 33 online courses covering crops, livestock, marine and fisheries, organic agriculture, and social technologies. <coughs> In terms of research methods, a survey was used. The survey was conducted among 273 randomly selected e-learners from the population provided by API. Focus group discussions were also held among a total of 35 purposely selected e-learners, mainly agricultural extension workers in Pangasinan, Albay, Agusan del Norte, Cagayan de Oro City, and Bukit Lod. Questionnaires and FGD guide serve as the main instruments. All data were transcribed and the trans transcriptions were used for data analysis. These are the results in terms of uh, input, and one of these input is time. Data show that 72% of the users completed one module of online course in one hour. 33% of them each worked on module in the morning, afternoon, or evening. 65% finish an online course within a month. In less than a month, 50% were able to finish one module, 35% finish two modules, and about 15% finish three or more. This means that one online student or one user is able to accomplish more than one module within a month. In terms of money, 65% of the respondents said they did not spend money because they were using the computers in their in their office. Only about 35% spent money for computer rental or internet fee. These are for people who cannot work during office hours or let's say uh, the internet is down, then they have to go to internet cafes and continue working on their online modules. In terms of equipment and facilities, 55% did not own a computer, 48% owned computers. Among non-owners, 45% access computer at the office and 38% access in the internet shop or internet cafe. Who were rich? In terms of user type, 47% were agricultural extension workers. Initially, the e-learning program was intended for agricultural extension workers so that uh, the face-to-face -face trainings have already been reduced. And 25% uh, were students. The ages of the users varied from 25 to 54 years old. Most were married and 48% were single. 77% were college graduates and of these, 65% were female and 45% were male. What activities were done? Uh, working on the online module required that the user should visit the e-learning website send texts or messages in case he, wants, he or she wants additional information. The user can view the tutorials on YouTube as additional you know, uh, learning tool, and they also have access to reading materials. The API ensure that there are additional reading materials that can be downloaded from its website. In terms of outcomes, 96% indicated they felt they increased their knowledge. What are the evidences of their knowledge gain? The participants gave the following answers. Since they were agricultural extension workers, they said that uh, after learning from the ATI online courses, they are now able to give satisfactory, credible answers and explanations to farmers' skills. If you will know, most of their college degrees in agriculture were uh, based on uh, a particular field. So for example, if I am a BSA graduate major in animal science, I can only answer questions on animal science. But sometimes farmers drop by the API office and they may ask questions not related to animal science. So they felt that uh, with the course, they were able to answer some none. Uh, animal science related queries from walk-in visitors to their institutions. Uh, some of the other evidences that came up were the following. 
the extension workers were sufficiently equipped to deliver lectures to farmers. So now they are being invited as lecturers or resource persons on agricultural training for farmers. They are able to explain symptoms and control of banana diseases to farmers. They can now provide advice to farmers. And some of them said that the course helped them pass the agricultural board exam. In terms of attitude change towards e-learning, 73% said, yes, I experienced a change in my attitude. Among the evidences, they said that there is no pressure or stress in e-learning. They found it challenging to use the computer for e-learning. E-learning is addictive. They were satisfied with the course completion, along with the certificate that was given to them, and the certificate can also be used for promotion. They, uh, they found it um, very useful. And they were also more confident to share information to farmers. If you will know uh, the age range of the agricultural extension workers who enrolled on the online e-learning was 25 to 54. Uh, this means there were extension workers in the older age group who do not know how to use the computer. And so API, through its key extension coordinators, provided training on how to use the computer, basic training on how to use the computer, and instructions on how to access the online computer. If they do not know how to use it, they requested help from fellow extension workers. In terms of changes in skill or practice, or practice, 87% was noted, and these are evidences. In terms of uh, those who enrolled on uh, online courses dealing with crops, they are now able to practice organic vegetable farming. Some planted and harvested yam in 200 square meter lot after taking a lesson on yam for ube production. Others were able to establish uh, greenhouse structures near their office. Changes in livestock practice included production of other grasses and legumes for their goats, and some applied monsoon handling in terms of uh, housing for goats. In terms of organic fertilizer application, uh, some of the respondents mentioned that they were able to construct a vermicomposting facility and they currently maintain this in their own garden. They were able to produce 100 uh, bags of vermicas. And uh, they also started a vermiculture project in the community sponsored by the municipal mayor. And they were able to introduce vermicomposting to farmers who have now become suppliers of vermicompost in the area. In terms of policy outcomes, these are the proposed e-learning policies for API. First, make e-learning an official and lifelong API program. About 85% of the respondents agree on this policy. What are their reasons? E-learning fits in with the predominance of ICTs for learning. It makes learning accessible. It is an easy way to learn. It provides for quality education. Uh, API underwent no, a series of workshops, a series of pre-testing and trial runs before they set up the e-learning online. I think it took them about three or five years just to do all the situation needs analysis, select the courses or problems that would address the needs of potential stakeholders. And uh, they also said that uh, e-learning uh, it's beneficial, it is inexpensive, it is paperless, it creates multiplier effect on e-learning. What I learn, I can share with parents. Uh, and they also learn technology that they can share with others. Another proposed policy is uh, not to charge fees for e-learning. So as of now, e-learning is free and 79% agreed on this proposed policy. Because API has the mandate to train and provide information on agriculture and fisheries to people who need it most so they can improve their production, livelihood, and well-being. E-learning also attracted students who will be future agricultural providers. And most of these were students of the agricultural uh, bachelor in technology courses. And after they finished this and after graduation, they were employed 
in the agriculture office in their district. They said that charging fees will discourage people interested in e-learning but cannot afford it. Other proposed policy guidelines for e-learning from the respondents, 24% said that e-learning should be offered to all kinds of stakeholders in the community. At the moment, the agricultural extension workers are the priority. Second priority are students. And uh, the least priority are the farmers. The language is English, so uh, they may think it will be offered to farmers, then a lot of preparation still needs to be done. 20% said that a course evaluation should be included at the end of each course. 40% said that students should be enrolled in one online course at a time. Other uh, policy, uh, policy statements were the following. If a student pays a course, he or she may retake or re-enroll it. A course should be finished or completed within six months. What is happening is that a student sometimes enrolls in many courses and they don't get to finish it. And if you don't finish it, you're either dropped or uh, your grade is recorded as failed. From the FGD, these are the outcomes, short-term outcomes. So FGD uh, participants, again, who are also mostly agricultural extension workers, said that in terms of attitude, they gained more self-confidence, they were willing to share their knowledge. After undergoing the e-learning, their morale was, was boosted in terms of using the computer. The e-learning provided them useful content so that they appreciated the learning process. Most of them were now interested to learn online because it also gives them better quality of learning. In terms of knowledge, um, they either increase their knowledge, refresh their knowledge, or updated their knowledge. And in terms of skills, these, are, these were the skills learned. How to reduce banana pests, how to design vermicomposting composting plant, how to construct a greenhouse, how to formulate feed for goats, how to do artificial insemination, and how to cross breed goats. As you can see, uh, the FGD participants were able to give specific answers based on their experience. Medium term outcomes in terms of behavior or practice were the following. Some of them have been invited as community trainers or lecturers. They were able to provide advisory services to farmers. They were also able to advocate for community adoption of technologies. They were also able to propose and engage in community projects such as vermicomposting, composting, organic fertilizer, both in swine production. They were also able to organize groups to implement uh, the project in their local, and they were able to link uh, proposed projects to local government who need support, support. In terms of policy outcomes, FGD participants indicated um, the following results. Okay. Uh, budget must be set aside for e-learning promotion, advocacy, and sustainability because the current after the e-learning project, uh, ATI found it difficult to get uh, funding support. They say it's not a priority of ATI, but rather the commodity products and technologies were the emphasis of uh, the Department of Agriculture. Uh, they also recommended that e-learning should be compulsory for agricultural extension workers with at least two courses completed in a year. API should conduct continuous regular promotion and focus of e-learning courses. API should create a regular pool of agents to consistently review, publish, update, and proofread e-learning content. They were also able to mention some typographical errors, uh, some errors in terms of responses, and if they come across this, they immediately report to the e-learning center in API via text messaging or phone call. Uh, these are now the result of mapping the evidences of change using a uh, POLIS model. So in terms of uh, e-learning provided inputs, in terms of uh, minimum time, least effort, minimum money, provision of computer and internet access to its users. In terms of output, people rich were mostly agricultural extension workers in their young to middle age group both male and female, married and single, and mostly college graduates. Uh, activities carried 
consisted of the online learning, visits to the website, viewing the video, support of the different courses, texting or SMS. They also established a call center for the, for the users. They were able to access the lessons online and they were provided with PDF references. The main individual outcomes were the following. A positive attitude towards self and e-learning, knowledge that is increased, refreshed, or updated, and acquisition of technological skills. Evidences in terms of uh, changes in outcome at the community level. The agricultural extension workers have become trainers, advisors, they have become a change advocator for agricultural technologies. They were able to implement uh, community projects with knowledge of e-learning, organize community groups for project implementation, and link the project to the LGU. And uh, in terms of outcomes, um, the study came up with proposed policy guidelines for e-learning. And so, uh, uh, impact will more or less be felt at the social, economic, political, environment, policy, policy support, and implementation. In terms of uh, conclusion, uh, the ATI's e-learning experience provides an alternative form of learning that is accessible, efficient, effective, relevant to needs, and can be sustainable. E-learning produces a multiplier effect with knowledge shared to farmers. Policy should be crafted and disseminated to ensure sustainable operation of e-learning. <coughs> Local application or adaptation of e-learning content or technologies uh, gain is a crucial factor. Evidences of results of e-learning from users' experiences and perspectives can open opportunities for sustainability and upscaling of the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tano, for that very interesting topic. Um, the floor is now open for questions, insights, and suggestions for the latter's presentation. You may use the microphones in the aisles of the auditorium to speak up and raise a question for that. So, questions.
evaluated them in their knowledge, not just in light of the, the scores during the time. Because it might that's what have we did. some. Uh, that's what we did when we showed you the list of evidences, the specific uh, evidences of the knowledge that they got from the from the courses. But uh, admittedly, impact we still have to go to that uh, we still have to go to that level because impact would be measured at the at the community. So we did not reach that stage even only one year for the project assessment. My second question is uh, the Similar to this, we are also undertaking the same activity with the Department of Agriculture under the RISE program. Uh, my question is that after graduating or after completion of or completing a course here in e-learning, can we already qualify this as uh, when you are in TESCA? Colleges 
colleges and state universities. Because some of them require it as an additional course to, to, to pass, but additional requirements. We know what required. But um, ATR has been working with PESDA for a long time. And now they're also moving towards encouraging uh, more participation from the applicants, especially the agricultural schools and colleges. Yeah, okay, so uh, another question from is what do you think is the short uh, shortcomings of the, this kind of methodology of learning or capacity building? Um, uh, the capacity, not the evaluation. The capacity. Not the evaluation, but the, the, the course itself. What, what do you think is the one of the uh, mga weaknesses or the shortcomings of this kind of uh, It was already mentioned that the strengths included uh, accessibility, free, free learning, uh, easy understanding of the course because the, the course was really compressed and developed in such, in layman's terms. So all the technical considerations, etc., were, were already in mind. But there are shortcomings which also came from the, from the participants themselves. Because like this, you know, it turned out that uh, in the FGD, one extension worker raised that, yes, they can also copy. Uh, they, they, uh, what do you call this? Yeah. They, um, they, the, See, the users were very innovative such that they took down notes. Because for the e-learning, there were no instructions on how to use it, just open, read, and answer. So some were very innovative because they took down notes. And the notes help them pass the quiz at the end. And some, for example, we are office mates. You are an agricultural extension worker. You have already completed the course. I will ask your help uh, to go online, to give me the password, etc. <laughs> and then sometimes when she is already answering, she does not understand. What is it? What is it? What is the answer? So, quote unquote, there is some cheating going on in order to pass the the course at the at the end. I think uh, these were mostly their uh, their stories, and I think that the, the courses were offered mostly online. But online there is no face to face, and some of the participants were suggesting that to have a blended type of learning where there is online and there is face to face interaction. Like uh, uh, in addition to the online learning, they proposed to be to organize small groups where they could, let's say, visit a demonstration of how to do artificial insemination. They visit to uh, a demonstration of technology plots to enrich the, the learning experience. So while uh, online learning has its advantages, it also has its uh, disadvantages. Okay, any more questions for Dr. Jordan? Yes. My name is Paul Su Sai Sana. I'm from Laos. I'm a PhD student in community development in SIPA. Uh, your presentation is very interesting to me. Um, uh, last week I went to visit a um, community in the Philippines in uh, Ifugao and uh, Nuga, Vizcaya. So I found that uh, the people in community, they don't speak English. They use their own language. So uh, when I listen to, to e-learning as we high go for uh, social transformation, it's come to me is uh, you, you consider also the language, especially at the ethnic group language that you use uh, e-learning as we high go for uh, social transformation. And how you will consider in the in terms of, of the future that how you learning to be more efficient more effectively in the future that e learning can access to the uh, community level and uh, individual level, especially farmers and others who are interested to learn that they don't have opportunity to access to education. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's a good question. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the e-learning program was designed primarily for agricultural extension workers. So as you can see, 
most of the respondents were agricultural extension workers themselves. It was not actually designed for farmers. There were there was a, a very very small group of farmers, a negligible amount of farmers who who, who, who enrolled in the course. But these were the farmers who, who were already advanced farmers who are uh, into cash. What they call that high value cash crops, etc. And so, um, because it is meant for the agricultural uh, technicians to learn from this and share the knowledge to the farmers. But uh, thinking of your answers, uh, the technicians themselves also recommended that a similar online program for farmers should also be offered and it should be in the vernacular or the local dialect. And I don't know if ATI will act on this, uh, on this uh, suggest on this suggestion. Um, experience has shown that uh, we already have um, what we call this uh, computer feeds, the farmers information technology center available in uh, different locations in the country and this is now being managed by Picard. And results show that still very few farmers go to the feed center because they either do not know how to use the computer and so they have to rely on the assistance of the agricultural extension worker to help them online and go on, on the course. So it would be a good suggestion also to develop uh, similar courses for farmers, although a baseline study should also be uh, conducted to find out how ready and how prepared are local farmers who use the computer as a form of, of learning. Perhaps it can be offered in stages, starting with farmers who are uh, tending to their high quality crops and then eventually it can go down to the, to the poorer, poorer farmers. And again, technology hubs would be very helpful for access to these computers. Question. Thank you very much, Ma, for your for your um, presentation. Uh, because Circa is also offering online courses. In fact, we have uh, two ongoing online courses right now in in partnership with the UP Open University. And your presentation uh, will be very helpful for us really to come up. I think I would suggest this to Marcel to to come up with a similar. Um, what do you call this, uh, similar method of evaluating our online course because the one, the online course on um, responding to climate risks in um, uh, climate risk in uh, agriculture and natural resources management is already in, on its sixth offering. So I think we need to evaluate also uh, how these online courses impacted uh, the, the, the learners themselves. Now, um, you said that these online courses offered by ATI are, are free. So, were you able to get data on the attrition, on how many dropped from the course? Because sometimes when it is, when you pay for the course, you know, you, you will feel bad if you don't continue to, to complete the course. But if it is free, what motivates them to, to finish the course? I mean, don't have any investment except, of course, the time that you put in when you when you take the modules or when you take it in your own free time. So, what motivates these learners to, to, to complete the course? Because in our the online course that we offer with Open University, it is not free, but it is some somewhat subsidized, or you just pay a very minimal amount. But then there are also some students who drop from the course in the middle in the middle of the of the course. Yeah. Uh, I do not exactly recall the attrition rate, but when they showed us uh, the total list and the scores, there was about 10 to 15 percent uh, attrition rate. Why they cannot access the internet? Uh, later on, they did not find the time to, to complete the course, and so they just drop it. And when it's dropped, it's recorded as a uh, automatically as a failure in the electronic records of, uh, of uh, API. So they also they also uh, lost some um, enrollees in the in the course. But on the other hand, there were also enrollees from overseas, overseas Filipino workers. And these were mostly um, managers who own farms in the Philippines, but because they are working abroad, uh, they thought 
about it useful to enroll in the course so they themselves can give the instructions to their farmers, to their farm, to their farm laborers. Uh, in terms of motivational factors, well, I think it's a mandate, as mentioned earlier, it's a mandate of the API to provide uh, agricultural uh, extension or information to, to, to farmers. And so uh, the agricultural extension workers must be updated no, on uh, agricultural technologies from what they have learned in the academy for four or five years ago. So I think um, that is one motivation. Uh, second is the, the certificate, ma'am, the certificate, because they can use it for promotion. They were, in fact, um, the certificates came late because uh, normally they would gather all the graduates at one time and they will uh, manually distribute the certificates on a sort of uh, online graduation. But this comes very late because um, ATI alone has to prepare all the certificates. And so to remedy this and maybe to provide more motivation, the certificate is now offered online. So that means if you pass the course, automatically you get the certificate. But mostly the certificate is just a proof of uh, additional learning and they collect it, you know, for, for, promote, for, for promotions. So I think uh, those were the two um, key motivational factors for the agricultural extension workers. And for non-agricultural extension workers, the students, these were required. You know what requirement as additional, no? That you, you should take at least one line, one line, one online course as additional requirement for your degree. But you must be able to agree because it's free. <laughs> so they said, oh, I can also learn from this. It's free. And it gives them some benefit because they passed the board exam. They were hired as uh, employees of LPUs for the meeting. So are are they forced to, are these agricultural workers forced to take the online course? No. 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 But uh, there is advocacy. No, every year whenever they have this, uh, they, they still conduct their agricultural training workshops. And so uh, during these workshops, the agricultural extension coordinators uh, use it as an opportunity to advertise, to encourage the agricultural extension workers to act as resource persons to enroll in the course. So there is a policy on the part of the, the extension of the future workers. But it's not a course of And okay. more questions? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, my name is Dwayne Dutchong. I'm from Vietnam. Now I'm taking a PhD in uh, agriculture, major in uh, animal science. Uh, uh, in our uh, in our uh, our major we need uh, we need uh, the practical so much so it's a uh, I'd like to ask you that how to improve the practical in the in the field where I study in the in the okay. thank you so uh, how how should practical be offered in the online courses as mentioned by the students they want to do uh, face to face they want to organize small groups of farm visits, demonstrations, where they can see and actually try out the, uh, let's say, the artificial insemination method. Because the participants said that even with the video, if you have the video, you are able to understand the concept, but still, you need to apply and you still need to, to, to practice. So they wanted to, to go no, on uh, field visits, uh, field tours, and see how field demonstrations, to see how the technologies are, are being done. And I think uh, API is now applying this in some of their new courses. They are now offering also online first, and then have uh, face-to-face, and then the online face-to-face uh, -face in some of their uh, new courses. OK, I think uh, the, the last question will be coming from the lady. <laughs> Good afternoon po, I'm Marilyn Mateo, PhD graduate student po. Uh, I'm just wondering how you have, and your team, have um, evaluated the skills 
of your student of the students. It's because uh, as I have got from your from your previous answers, well, it seems to me that everything has been theoretical. And um, I guess for agricultural technicians, it is very, very important that practical skills should also be enhanced. So how are you able to evaluate the skills that you, that your, um, supposedly your, your results show that it has been enhanced or developed? Actually, uh, it is not the goal or objective of the study to evaluate the skills. Uh, uh, our objective is at identifying, you know, identifying potential evidences that would include knowledge, attitude, and practices. And I think uh, your suggestion to evaluate the skills themselves, the practices, would be a good addition to this uh, proposal. So we only start at identifying evidences of skills, etc. And from there, another quantitative study can be done to evaluate the skills per se that were acquired from the EU. That could be a good uh, research, a future research study. Thank you. Yes, one more <laughs> last question. For the last question from the gentleman. Hello. Barbara from Finland. Anyway. Um, so meaning man the, the, the title of this this is the whole project. No, no. It's okay. just as a it's just So this a, this title is just for this study. For the conference. Yeah, because it's looking at the title, social transformation, you see it's, it's really really huge. It's so encompassing. And looking at e learning as a vehicle and looking at the results, parang it's it's not telling that it's, it's really transformed socially you communities or the people? Uh, you will note the community transformation is still minimal in terms of the project project implementations. Nag, uh, the, the, the learners were able to propose, let's say, projects to, to the community, let's say, set up a very proposing uh, project for the community, the school organizing uh, a green uh, production, etc. So those are very minimal evidences at the community level. And still, it can be further explored. There are very few evidences at the community level that emerge from the study, and we could not force you know, the respondents to uh, elicit these answers because we would be guiding them already toward the, the response. So, so social transformation is mostly at the individual with some at the community level. Ah, some at the community level. You go up, we didn't get data on how much money they earn from selling the back new verbi composting to no uh, increased income, increase, etc. And that would also be part of the recommendations for careers. Okay. So I think